My dear brothers and sisters, the second Sunday of Advent, we have the theme from darkness to light, Tomasoma Jyotir Gamaya. And we are preparing ourselves for this great celebration. And we are praying for the youth of our parish. Last Sunday, if you remember, we prayed for all the married couples and the theme was from ignorance to bliss. And today we have this theme from darkness to light. We often speak of our journeys towards God. But in reality, you will find that God has made so many journeys and he must have traveled the most. And most of the traveling is done by God. That is the reason why we see one of those great writers, St. John of the Cross, in one of his writing on dark nights, writes very beautifully because he was a great mystic, a great poet, the 16th century figure, a great spiritual director, most especially to Saint Teresa of Avila. And therefore he is known as one great spiritual director. John of the Cross is not so much interested in helping in climbing the holy mountain or the mountain of the Lord. He is not interested about that. He is more meditating upon how this God can be met. Why he presents that is because he presents God not as a dumbly person waiting for us. A dumbly person there somewhere up the mountain waiting for us to come to him. There in the holy mountain my job is not to just climb the holy mountain, the sacred mountain or the mountain of the Lord. It is unbiblical. Remember this always. To climb the mountain of the Lord, the Lord is waiting for me there, dumbly waiting. No, it is unbiblical. Why? Because biblically, the principle that we see is the primacy of grace. God's grace. The primacy of God's grace is important. Namely, God is waiting. But God's initiative is always first. So remember, the initiative of God is first. The one thing that the Bible is not doing is passively waiting for us to come crawling to Him. No. The Bible does not say you have to go crawling to him because he's waiting there. No. The Bible says God is actively pursuing you to, to that climbing of the mountain of the Lord. He is pursuing you in all his ways, in all the efforts that he does. His, he is pursuing you. He is pushing you. He is making that effort. And that is why he travels the most. Not we traveling to God. Because his desire is, I must see that they are reaching to that part. What John the Baptist is talking about is, he is waiting on the ground. And there on the ground, he is waiting for the helicopter to land. Just like any helicopter, when it wants to land, it has to have a very clean and smooth place and therefore this helicopter has to land and the helicopter wants the land and all the rocks to be removed it cannot land on the rocks and therefore you have to remove you have to clear the ground and clearing the ground the helicopter can easily land god is like an helicopter and he wants to land in our space and do you have that enough space for the Lord to have land? And that is the reason why he says, have you enough space for God in your life? It's an Advent image, very clear Advent image. That Advent is a time of waiting, but do I have enough space? Am I able to make space for God in my life, in my work, in my responsibilities? What we can do with our own efforts, with our own capabilities, is to clear the ground for the Lord 
to land, for the helicopter to land safely. That is the reason why we have to detach ourselves from many things. That makes the helicopter to land very smoothly. That makes the Lord to come into our lives very smoothly. Today, my dear friends, we have to be doing work, clearing the ground. In other words, clearing all the rough terrains, clearing all the rocks, making the land smooth and even for the God to send His grace upon us and that, that grace may come into our lives. That is the image that God wants to give us through John the Baptist. See the first reading from the book of Isaiah. Prophet Isaiah says, make this path straight. Remove all those hindering for the Lord to come. What needs to be cleared, my dear friends, we have to knock it down. Maybe hard rocks in our lives, we have to knock it down. Knock down those rocks. But he says, Isaiah says, fill the valleys. What is that filling the valleys? Knock down the rocks. Yes, we can knock down many of the attachments in our life. Filling the valleys. What is that? The empty valleys are there. Yes, in our lives there are empty valleys. And these empty valleys can be filled by our works of charity, by our works of mercy. I help others. I give something to others. I give time for others. I bring them to the light of Christ. I am illumined and therefore I bring that light to others. I am filling those valleys. I cannot keep those valleys empty. Therefore clearing the rocks for the Lord to land, yes. Filling the valleys is my duty as well. Therefore the Lord is pursuing you to climb the mountain. But the valleys I have to do, that is my part. And Advent is a time where I can do this and that is why John the Baptist comes with the theme of repentance in today's Gospel reading. Repentance is very, very important. And for the youth, when we are speaking about them, I like to tell them about the three A's. And for each one of you who have grown out of the youth life, yes, my dear friend, three important A's, attention that you have to give to them. The attention is necessary. The affection is necessary. And the appreciation is necessary. If these three A's are there, I'm sure they will be guided. The attention means, yes, I am keeping an eye on my kid, my growing kid. The affection is because I love my kid. I love my growing child. Then the important thing is, even though they make mistakes, they are hot-headed. And then if I don't appreciate their little words, their imagination, then they become dumb. Therefore, I appreciate every work of theirs. This is what every husband and wife also have to do. To pay attention, to be affectionate and to appreciate. Another important aspect that John the Baptist tells us is that our Lord is a wonderful God. He is so beautiful that he takes all our sins. All our sins mean all our sins confessed. Remember this. All our sins, all our sins he washes away. No, all our sins that are confessed. He takes all our sins and puts it into a lake. And there in the lake he dumps them and it drowns deep down into that lake. But he does one beautiful thing there in the lake. At the shore of the lake he puts a big notice board there. And on that notice board he says, no fishing. Why? Because we all pull out our old ways of life. We like to fish on others' mistakes. We like to fish out all the wrongs that we have done. Therefore, the Lord, when He forgives all your sins, He dumps it down into that lake. But remember, no fishing. That is the reason why Eliot, one of the great writers, says, It is but little good. You will, be, you will do watering last year's crops never do last year's crops you want to water no 
all your mistakes you want to water sitting down and watering. Look at your life, a life in which you have to go forward. Therefore, confessed sins should not be looked into, probed into, because our Lord has cleansed us once and for all. It is well said, my dear friends, that if you want God to be pleased, then you must please God. We all love to please God, yes. But if you really want God to be pleased, you have to please God. The best way to start is go and make a great confession. If you follow the teachings of John the Baptist, just like a monk who said, for your Christmas, instead of dreaming or of an unhappy Christmas, see that you as a Christian can admire and can be admired. Amen. Let us all stand for the creed.